Yo, my name is Benjamin and in this video I'd like to show you some extra layout template use cases. Starting with mobile navigations. Here on desktop, our navigation switches back to its default state when we switch pages. Now let's have a look at the mobile version. As we switch pages, the navigation stays open. This is something we don't want on the phone breakpoint. So let's go ahead and fix. In the navigation, you'll see we use interactions to switch between the phone closed and the phone open variants. With layout templates, we have full control over these states, meaning we can decide what happens when we switch pages. So to fix the previous issue, I can select these links and add interactions that say on click go back to the closed variant. So for each link, I'm adding an interaction back to the closed variant. And there we go. So this should do the trick. Let's go back and give this another preview. So let's open our menu. And now when I click any of these links, our menu gently animates back to its default state. And we have full control over the transition and animation settings here. For example, if we wanted this to be instant, we can go back to the component, select this variant and set the transition property to instant. And then our links will behave just as if there were no layout templates applied at all. This is up to you, you have full control. Next, we have a new property allowing you to define whether or not a layer should be included or excluded from page effects. Sometimes you don't want elements like this navigation to be included in the page effect transition. So I will select the layers I wish to exclude, go to the styles menu, select page effect, and this will be set to exclude by default. Now, if I go back, you can see that these elements ignore the existing page effects. Finally, let's have a look at using a single layout template with properties to adapt to different use cases. On this website, we have a layout template with a top bar and a footer, but we also have documentation pages where we wish to add a sidebar. So we can add this sidebar to our layout template and I have it right here with position set to fixed, but it's overlapping our footer. And if we go back to the home page, you can see it's now visible on every single page. This is not ideal. So we could use multiple templates, but in this case, I want documentation to be a part of our top bar navigation with a shared layout animation so it benefits from being in a single template. So what I'll do instead is I'll add a new toggle variable and I'll call it sidebar. And we can use this to control multiple properties within our layout template. Most pages won't have this sidebar, so I'll set the default to no. Then I'll first connect it to the visible property of my sidebar component to make sure it's hidden when the sidebar is set to no. Then I'll select the entire desktop breakpoint here and I'll connect this variable to padding, allowing us to convert the yes or no value to unique combinations of padding. Simply put, when this sidebar value is set to yes, I want to make sure padding left is set to 200 pixels. And when it's set to no, use our default padding values. And that should do the trick. Just like that, we made a customizable layout template. We have this sidebar property set to no on all pages. And I can go to the documentation index and CMS detail pages and set it to yes. So first the index page and then our detail pages. And that's it. Everything is set up correctly. And now if we give this a preview, you can see we get the correct layout for our sub pages. We get an active state animation to the documentation pages, and we have a custom sidebar layout on these docs. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and stay tuned for more updates coming soon.